On this episode of Simply, we'll meet the creative young stars at the Manton Avenue Project. Watch out, there's dinosaurs among us at the zoo. We'll meet a network of people on a mission to cure a rare disease. Then we're looking up to the cosmos in Charlestown. And we'll check in with Chef Nick, who's planning the dinner party for the ages. Simply New England is presented by Cranston's Wines and More. And Star, work where you love. Hey folks, welcome to Simply New England. I'm your host, Becky Gibble, and May is gonna be stellar. From the stars in the sky, to the stars of tomorrow, to being the star of your very own dinner party, we've got a show for you that's out of this world. Stick around. Hey folks, welcome back. I had to caffeinate up at Rhode Island favorite Seven Stars Bakery because we've got such a big show for you today. Speaking of stars, first up, we head to the Manton Avenue Project, where kids learn skills through playwriting and performance. Prepare to be inspired. So my name's Meg Sullivan, and we are here at the Manton Avenue Project's clubhouse in Olneyville. So the Manton Avenue Project is a year-round out-of-school time program for young people in Olneyville and we teach playwriting and performance to build self-efficacy and resilience in young people's lives. When they start with us in third grade, they learn playwriting and they learn about building character and conflict resolution and creative thinking and write their own plays and we produce the plays that the kids write using professional actors working alongside the kids. So it's really about giving young people the stage and saying this is your stage, you can say whatever you need to say and we will treat it seriously and we'll produce it in a professional way. And we do that year after year as they continue to grow up. They become the directors, they become the actors in the shows, they become the dramaturgs, they become classroom teachers. It's really about creating pathways for leadership using the creative arts and theater as our main tool. My name is Edwin and I've been working at the Manson Avenue Project since third grade. Back in high school, I became an intern, and recently I intern, dramaturg, and direct the kids' plays. And it's honestly really fun for me. Yeah! Oh my, God, hi! my name's Juvia. I'm an intern at MAP. I help the kids write their plays, and then I help some actors with their lines. When the kids arrive, it is a bit chaotic. There's lots of snacks, there's lots of running around, and then we circle up and we usually check in with each other, see how we're doing. We play a lot of games, and then the notebooks come out and there's a lot of writing that happens. Building scenes and acting them out, and it's a lot of fun. I think it's a great creative outlet because they get to express their minds and they get to use their imagination with writing their plays. It's always fun to hear the kids making their stories and what they have to come up with. And then seeing my artistic designs like coming out when they're actually directing it, it's really fun. Number one, fundamentally, it is important that young people have a voice and feel that their voice is being heard. And so this theater space offers an audience the opportunity to create a world on stage. You don't have to act as if you're someone when you're really not. At MAP, you're able to be yourself, express yourself, meet new people. Enabling young people to have the stage in a way that really feels like it belongs to them, that's really important.
Hey folks, I'm here amidst the ancient fiddle figs at Jordan's Jungle in Pawtucket because next up, we're about to have a close encounter of the prehistoric kind when we visit the latest exhibition at Roger Williams Park Zoo, Dinosaurs Among Us. Hi, I'm Cori Nyani, and we are here at the Roger Williams Park Zoo's newest experience, Dinosaurs Among Us. We have about 60 animatronic dinosaurs. They're life-size dinosaurs, so we tried to get them as accurate as possible. So we have the smallest baby dinosaurs all the way up to a Dragonotus, which is our largest dinosaur. And then of course we have our favorites like our T-Rex and Triceratops, and they're right up close so people can go right up to them, take pictures with them, interact with them. We worked with a company called Immersive Productions who helped us create these dinosaurs. And the amount of detail that was put into each one by every designer is just incredible. When they were created, they were created to look and feel and act as realistic as possible. So their eyes are blinking, some of them spit water at you, which is really cool. After your walkthrough experience, the adventure continues and we have a whole bunch of different dino rides. Little kids can go on these fun dino little tractor rides. We have standing and walking dinosaur rides. And then everyone can get in on some fossil digging station fun and they can uncover some really fun fossils and bones. One of the things that people might not realize is that there are actual dinosaurs among us and one of the closest relatives is actually birds. So you'll notice that some of the dinosaurs have feathers, you'll notice some of the claws are very replicated like falcon or an eagle because birds are descendants of dinosaurs which is really cool. So one thing is our dinosaurs don't know how to stay quiet. So we do have our sensory friendly mornings, which is great for families that are looking for something that's a little less crowded and a little less noisy. Dinosaurs Among Us is running now through August 13th and it's open daily. We also have a couple of late night special events. So it's just such a fun experience to come and kind of get a piece of that, you know, prehistoric time and wonder. Grab a fresh cup, folks. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Next up, after years of being apart due to the pandemic, we meet up with our friends at the HPS Network to learn more about their quest to find a cure for this rare disease. Hi, I'm Heather Walton. I'm from Stratford, Connecticut, and I have HPS type 4. My name is Gina Danziger, and I have HPS 3. Shaquille McCoo, HPS 1. HPS is a rare genetic condition. It's a type of albinism. There are, I believe, 11 or 12 types of HPS, but they're discovering new types all the time. Um, I have type 3. It is a bleeding disorder. Our platelets do not clot properly. We don't have dense bodies in our platelets. It can also affect your colon, your lungs, all kinds of things depending on the type you have. The HPS Network is a family that was built from the ground up from a few people who wanted to find answers, who wanted to find others who were going through the similar struggle that they were and to provide support to families that were spread out, who didn't know about each other, who were fearful for the future, for their children, for themselves. So my name is Cassandra Mendez and we are at the 2023 HPS conference. It feels really good to be back after, after COVID, after not being able to be with people physically. I mean, we're still medically fragile, still trying to take the necessary precautions, but it's been really nice. So amazing to be back because everyone was devastated to be gone for so many years. And you just walk in, you smell, like there's a smell to the hotel and you're like, I know where I am. It's wild, it's wild because it feels like everything is right, like all is right with the world. We're back at conference at this hotel where I feel like part of my brain lives rent free, you know? 
really fun to see everybody and be around these people that understand you in ways that a lot of other people do not. It's a family that understands your needs. It's a family who's trying to find a cure to end this. It's a family that loves and supports you through each and every matter. It's incredible. It's created a community for parents, for spouses, for partners, for support systems, for friends. For us as HPSers to be able to come together and find that support and that you're not so alone anymore. And we've accomplished that, but now we need to make that even bigger and accomplish a cure. The network is also working towards a cure and that's a major part of the whole reason we're here. The HPS network is not only community focused in terms of like the fellowship side of it, but also very, very research oriented. We had more than 40 doctors here this weekend. They did their meeting of the minds yesterday, which is basically all of them spending the day speaking about um, everything that they're, they're working on and leveraging each other's expertise. So it's a very interesting marriage between the research piece of it, that very clinical side, but also the human piece of it. Having HPS is hard and it's hard to know what your future will look like. I think being part of research it helps. It helps to feel like you're trying to do something and help and give back to a community. And it may not even be for you. It may be for the kids that you see running around, really excited, but you know what they have because it's also what you have. And, and I think participating gives you, I don't know, gives you some purpose and a little bit of excitement and hope. How exciting is it to feel like you could help be on the brink of something cool? Out and About is brought to you by Harbor One. Find your harbor at harborone.com. You don't say. Apparently, next up, we should go see Popeye's good friend Reba, the red-tailed hawk, at Roger Williams Park Zoo. Apparently, she's got all the tea. Right, Popeye? Hi, my name is Michaela, and I am an animal ambassador specialist here at the Roger Williams Park Zoo. And we are right outside of Animal Ambassador Holding right now, where I have my friend Reba, the red-tailed hawk. Reba was born in 2004. Um, she was found in the wild as a juvenile with a gunshot wound to one of her wings. Someone found her, brought her into a wildlife rehabilitation center. Unfortunately, she had to have half of her right wing amputated, which made her deemed unreleasable. Since she can't fly, she would not be able to survive out in the wild. But she had a really great demeanor, was really used to people. Um, so she became an ambassador animal and she came to live with us at the zoo in 2008. Have you ever heard the iconic bald eagle screech that you hear in movies? Well, that's not actually a sound that a bald eagle makes. That is a sound that a red-tailed hawk would make. So next time you hear that in the movies, you can think of red-tailed hawks. So red-tailed hawks are native to Rhode Island. They're actually native to all of North America. So you can find them everywhere. So if you're driving along 95, if you see a, a bird up on top of a light post, it's probably a red-tailed hawk and Reba's just one of the many beautiful animals that you can see here at the Roger Williams Park Zoo. I'm gonna take this guy home. Follow along on Instagram to see how long it takes me to kill him. Sorry. Stick around, one of us will be right back. Big news here at Simply New England. We've been nominated for two New England Emmys. One for best host. Let's roll the clip. Mm. Mm. Thank you to everyone who's welcomed us into their businesses and to all of you for welcoming us into your homes. Fingers crossed, we'll keep you posted. Hey folks, welcome back. Next up, we take our own rocket to Mars through the lens of the telescope at the Frosty Drew Observatory in Charlestown, Rhode Island. Beam me up, Scotty. My name is Scott McNeil. 
and we are at the Frosty Drew Observatory and Science Center in Charlestown, Rhode Island. This is where we celebrate space, the cosmos and astronomy. October 2021, we installed our brand new Plane Wave CDK 600 telescope. It is now the most advanced telescope in the Northeast available to the general public. We've had unbelievable views through this telescope. This is the darkest spot in Southern New England. And from this location, we can see thousands of stars on nights without the moon and without clouds. You come out here on a summer night and you can see the Milky Way and almost confuse it for clouds coming in. It's amazing. Every Friday night, the Frosty Drew Observatory hosts its Stargazing Nights event. It's a public event, it's free. We have a series of astronomers on hand that will point things out in the sky with their green lasers. We'll also be looking at objects in a telescope. Depending again on the night, we could look at anything from the moon to planets or even galaxies. My appreciation for what we have here on Earth is by and large enhanced by what we see in the night sky. The night sky is something that everybody should appreciate. It is a resource that allows us to look back through time to see how and where our universe was born. The biggest thing that I hear is wow. Every time someone looks through an eyepiece, it's always wow. People should come here because of curiosity. People should have that curiosity. People of all ages come here and ask questions and they see incredible objects that they wouldn't otherwise see. I see magic. So when you come to Frosty Drew, it's just an experience that takes you to another whole sense of what the majesty of the world is like. It's dark. The stars are just so bright, and it's so much fun to be with the people here. People come from all around, and it's just so much fun and so exciting. I urge you to come and enjoy the magic of Frosty Drew. After contemplating the minusculeness of my existence in the wide universe, I find that having a snack usually helps quell my existential dread. So I'm here at La Arepa in Pawtucket for, what else? A delicious arepa. While I chow down, let's catch up with Chef Nick, who's gonna show us how to curate the best dinner party ever. Keep on Cooking is brought to you by Cranston's Wines and More. Good morning. Hey, just making sure you got everything we need for tonight. Tonight? <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> of course I remembered. Like I'd ever forget something like that. Awesome, everyone's coming at five, so I'll see you in a bit. All right, I'll talk to you later, bye. Looks like I got some work to do. I've literally made a thousand cheese boards in my life, but now I need this one to be truly something special. That's why I'm here at Hawes Fine Foods, my go-to stop for, well, fine foods. A couple of cheese boards must have. Besides cheese, we need charcuterie, we need crackers, we need nuts, we need honey, we need jams, we need jellies, we need it all. Thank goodness Hawes has it. Oh man, listen, I gotta run. Thank you, Pam, you are a lifesaver. Okay, Pam totally hooked me up. She really bailed me out, but I gotta keep on shopping. All right, we gotta keep on moving here. I'm building this raw bar and I gotta check out a place that's not scared to be a little fresh. That's my buddy's a fearless fish market. All right, so we're coming here for the raw bar basics, oysters, shrimp, clams, but Fearless has all the stuff to really level up this once in a lifetime raw bar. So you're gonna have the uni, the black bass, the caviar, the tuna, all the great things that we need. Let's go. Well, Fearless never misses, but now we need something to drink, and I know just the spot. All right, cheese, check, fish, check, but now we need something super special to drink. That's why we swung down here to see my best buddies from Wines and More. Let's go. Well, nothing says a celebration like bubbles, so you know we gotta find something sparkly. And this Louis de Grenelle looks like it'll hit the spot. Sounds like a party starter to me. 
Cheese and shellfish calls for something light and refreshing, and this crowd knows their stuff, so I need something unique. And I think I may have found it. This is a Bims. Fantastic vineyard from Savoie, 100% Jacquere. I think that's gonna get the crowd going. Let's go with it. Grassy. Home run as always. Wine acquired, shopping complete, crisis averted. Let's head on home. Well, there's one thing I know about setting up a board, it's you need variety. It's not just salty cheeses, but it's also cured meats, pickled vegetables, sweet things like jams and honey, breads, crackers, nuts. It's really what you want to put into it is what you're going to get out of it. Little necks and oysters. Resting comfortably in ice. Let's get him some company. So excited. Hi! Come on in. We got some good stuff tonight. We got some good stuff tonight. Les, you want to open that? Sure. <laughs> Charlie, welcome to our house. Cheers. Thank you for having me. Well, thanks to Hawes, Fearless, Wines & More. Thank you guys so much for being here. And thank you, too. Until we meet again, keep on cooking. Yeah, that was more like All right. Yeah. Well, that's it. Welcome to the Clean Plate Club and the end of our show. Be sure to check out La Arepa in Pataket. Truly delicious. We'll see you next time. Simply New England is presented by Cranston's Wines and More and Star. Work where you love.